What's up guys, Jay here and welcome to the next video in the Deep Rock Galactic Mission Guide series. In today's video, we're going to go over the details and intricacies of the industrial sabotage mission type. We're going to cover the basics of what the process of completing an industrial sabotage is like, the finer details and intricacies that come with it, and some recommendations and guidelines on how to play each class in this particular mission. Lastly, we'll talk about the overall difficulty of industrial sabotage missions and how it compares to the other types in the game. So if you guys are ready, let's talk about what is probably my personal favorite mission type in the game, the industrial sabotage. By the way, if you want to see more gaming videos, subscribe to the channel, that way it's easier to find my content. Mission selected and locked in. Time to board the drop pod. So you're going through an industrial sabotage mission in Deep Rock Galactic. Well, these are probably one of the most complicated mission types in the game by a good margin. They have a lot of moving parts and multiple phases that require a good amount of coordination and effort from the entire team. The goal in an industrial sabotage mission is to dismantle the operations of a rival mining company as well as recover any stolen data from their data vault. To do this, you need to complete the steps of disabling the stations that power a force field that protects the data vault. You do this by calling in a hacking pod and establishing a connection to the power station from the pod. Once both of the force field's main power sources have been disabled, all that remains is to fully disable the field by removing the backup batteries and getting past the data vault's extremely dangerous bodyguard, the caretaker. Once that's done, you can retrieve the data rack, slap it onto Molly, and call for extraction. These missions definitely have a lot more going on than a simple mining expedition. The basic steps of completing an industrial sabotage can be broken down into four steps. Find the power stations, disable them with the hacking drone, defeat the caretaker, and then collect the data rack for extraction. Good work. Objective has been achieved. Call the drop pod when you're ready to leave. Industrial sabotage missions have some of the most intricate set pieces in the game. That's not to say that they are very difficult or mind-boggling, just that there are a lot of things you need to go through in order to complete them. First, like every mission type, it's good to know how much you will actually be traversing the cave system to find the power stations. As usual, there are parameters that are determined by the mission length and cave complexity. In the case of industrial sabotage missions, these determine the number of potential power stations you need to hack, which could be two or three. The next thing to keep in mind is the kind of layout that the cave system has on these missions. The caves will start with a small cave which leads to the primary hub cavern where the data vault is located. From there, there will be several branching pathways that will lead you to the power stations. The force field's power lines will branch off and you can actually use them to help find your way to the two subrooms that contain the power stations. Doing this will eventually lead you to the next step, disabling the power stations. Alongside the terrain, you will also need to be aware of the enemy presence you will be fighting. Alongside the usual glipid swarms that you're used to fighting, you will also be going up against rival machinery. There will be auto turrets and enemy drones that will add another layer of enemy presence that you need to be aware of. Once you find one of the two power stations, you need to call down a hacking pod. The pod will come down in a random location, so it's possible that it may come down in an inconvenient spot. Once you find the pod, you can collect transmitter nodes from the dispenser on the side of the pod. Tossing a node will cause it to attach to the surface it lands on, and as long as it's close enough and there's a clear line of sight, it will create a transmission beam between the pod and the node. Placing down the next node will then create another outline surrounding that node, and so on. You repeat this process until the nodes connect the hacking pod to the power station. Once a connection is made, return to the hacking pod and press the button to begin the hacking sequence. During the hacking sequence, the hacking drone nicknamed Haxi will begin hacking the station. In order for Haxi to hack the power station, it must be defended for a period of time from enemy attacks. If Haxi takes too much damage, he will shut down and halt progress on the hack. After a short period of time, the button will re-emerge and you will have to press it again to reboot Haxi. In addition to protecting Haxi, if one of the nodes are displaced, the transmission connection will have to be reset. Same as the setup procedure, you can pick up the nodes and reposition them within range and line of sight of the previous node in order to re-establish connection. Once the hacking sequence is complete, the power station will be fully disabled. Once both power stations are disabled, it's time for the fun part, at least in my opinion. At this point, the force field projector will be running on backup power, and its batteries must be forcibly removed. However, once the force field is disabled, the caretaker, the large upside-down pyramid structure within the force field, will be activated to defend the data vault, and must be defeated before you can collect the data rack. The caretaker fight consists of three phases, each phase becoming more difficult as the battle progresses. All phases involve at least three robotic arms surrounding the vault, which will shoot you, stab you, or burrow into the ground and re-emerge somewhere else to attack you. Weak points on the top corners of the caretaker will open up at the beginning of every phase, which can be damaged to reveal the caretaker's primary weak points on its sides. As each armor bar is depleted, the caretaker will spin faster and faster, making them more difficult to hit. Once all four armor bars are depleted, one of the four eyes on the caretaker will open which will allow you to damage its health, along with making probably the most intimidating sound in the entire game. Find the open eye and shoot it! 
Once one of its health bars is depleted, the eye will close and the next phase begins. The first phase is pretty simple, while phases 2 and 3 will spawn turrets or teleport phase bombs that explode after a few seconds. Once the caretaker is finally defeated, it'll explode, emitting a large shockwave that knocks back players and damages enemies. The data vault will then open up and the data rack will emerge on a pedestal. Now you can finally collect the data rack and attach it to Molly so you can get out of there. That's one for the books. Retrieving escape pod. Well, I told you there was a lot to take in with these missions. I hope that wasn't too much to take in. I tried to be as concise as I could. Now let's change gears and talk about the classes and what they can provide in this particular mission, as well as if any specific class has an incredibly useful position in regards to utility. This mission type is very involved, so each class has its own way of contributing to its success. I would say from personal experience that the engineer has the most amount of use when it comes to this mission since it involves so much defending. But with that in mind, let's go through each class and talk about the kind of utility they provide as well as if they do anything special for these missions. The driller can bring a lot of utility to this mission type. While his drills don't get as much attention as normal, you can still use them in some interesting ways. Most notably, he can carve out a good place for Haxi to hide when the hacking process is being done. He can also be useful at creating easy pathways to lay down the connector nodes for the hacking pot. In terms of weaponry, the driller's weapons can carry a lot of value here. His sludge pump can cover a large area, and the cryo thrower can help control the flow of enemies, while his EPC can do good work against the turrets and drones. The gunner has a similar role that he does in most mission types. His main goal is enemy control and thinning the herds. During the hacking process, his cluster grenades or incendiary grenades can help cover a large area of enemies. During the final fight with the caretaker, he can be very effective at hitting its weak points with his heavy raw firepower. Just don't forget to put your shield down and protect your allies whenever possible. The scout has some interesting interactions during this mission. First, similar to the escort duty mission, the scout is best equipped to collect materials and resources in order to aid the team. As always, this process can be made more efficient with the help of an engineer. One funny thing I realized is that the scout can actually get on top of the caretaker during the final fight to help hit the armor points. It's a little tricky to stay up there, but it's pretty fun to be able to hit the caretaker this way. In terms of equipment, the plasma carbine is really good here, and his crossbow is surprisingly effective at taking huge chunks out of the enemy turrets. Finally, the engineer, like I said before, has probably the most use in this particular mission type, since there are so many points where you need to defend an area, whether that be to defend Haxi or just defend your position against the caretaker, his ability to keep an area locked down and under control are beyond valuable here. His sentries are insanely useful as well as his plethora of equipment like his proximity mines and plasma bursters. His WSMG and shard diffractor can be very useful here since they excel at melting the mechanical enemies. And finally, similar to the driller, he can use his platforms to help make pathways for the hacking nodes. Now that we've covered each of the classes individually, let's put it all together. The gunner and engineer should prioritize on defending whatever position they are in and controlling the enemy swarms as effectively as possible. Meanwhile, the scout can zip around and collect any materials the team may need as well as get in advantageous positions for engagements. Lastly, the driller can really be a floater, assisting wherever is most needed, as well as terraforming the land to make it as easily defendable as possible. Remember that these roles are not set in stone and if the situation calls for it, you can always adapt. Impeccable work. You're making good progress. Now that we've covered the basics of the industrial sabotage mission and talked about how the classes function in it, let's talk about where the industrial sabotage stands when compared to the other mission types. Remember that each mission type gets three different ratings, one for difficulty, one for how fun it is, and one for its complexity, each with a value of 1 to 5, with 1 being low and 5 being high. Remember again that these ratings are only my personal take, so if you think it should be higher or lower, that's perfectly fine. First, in terms of difficulty, I'm going to give it a 4. This mission can be difficult because there are many phases to it, and the final confrontation with the caretaker can be really challenging if not taken seriously. Also, keeping the Haxi drone secure can be difficult with the amount of things happening all at once. Next, in terms of complexity, it's also going to get a 4 here because there are many steps and phases that require the team to pay attention to and stay on top of. Between finding the power stations, hacking into them, defending them, and then eliminating the caretaker, there are a few instances where you can actually catch your breath before going into the next phase. Also, the fight with the caretaker itself has several phases that require you to be proactive and aware of the mechanics. Finally, for the enjoyment rating, I'm going to give it a 5, because this is probably my favorite mission type in the game right now. The concept is really cool, and the steps it has feel very progressive. It does a good job of making you feel the scale of what you are trying to do. When the caretaker activates and makes that ominous sound, you know this is the point that the entire mission has led up to. And when the data rack appears like some kind of ancient artifact, you really feel the importance of this mission. Well, that covers essentially everything that you need to know about going through an industrial sabotage, and hopefully now you have a better understanding of what goes into them. So what do you guys think? Did I miss anything? Let me know down below in the comments. 
Anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Please be sure to give it a like because it tells me which types of videos you guys want to see. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next Friday for another video.